Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about random. So I want you to imagine that we have a six-sided die, and when we roll this die, it's going to land on a number between one and six. We can't control what number this lands on, and it's left completely up to chance as to whether we know what number this is going to land on. Like if I were to, let's say, pick a number like four, and we were to predict that this die is going to land on the number four, we have about a 17% chance that this is actually going to happen. And this is the concept of randomizing, which applies to game development as well. Like, let's say we're playing Pet Simulator X and we're trying to hatch an egg. The pet that we get has a random chance of giving us a higher rarity compared to the normal common pets or the uncommon pets. Like if we were to get a legendary or something, that has a higher rarity than if we were to go for something that's simpler. Uh, or if we were to play an RNG game, then it's going to pick out a bunch of different items with different rarities for us to obtain after we roll something. And so that is something that's important to know about when it comes to game development on Roblox, leaving stuff up to chance and adding randomization to it. And so that's what I'm gonna be teaching you how to do inside of this episode, which is math.random. So what we're going to do is go on the right side of the Explorer, we're gonna hit the plus sign and insert a script. We're going to call the script uh, random just like this and we're gonna hit enter. So I'm just gonna delete this and I'm also going to get rid of any additional tabs that we're not gonna be using. Okay, so what is math.random? It's basically a function that Roblox has given to us that can return a random number within a range that we provide it. So the way this is going to be structured is we're first going to make a random number variable. So we're just gonna say local random number, just like this. And we're gonna set this equal to math. So it's gonna look like this. Math is basically the library that we're gonna be using that has the random function. So then we're gonna say dot random, and this is all in lowercase too. So uh, once we do this, then we're gonna put open and close parentheses. And inside of here, it takes two numbers. So it has a range with a minimum value and a maximum value. So whatever minimum value we give it and whatever maximum value we give it, Roblox is going to pick a number between that range and it's going to return it to the random number variable as we have over here. So let's make the minimum value, let's say one, and then we're gonna separate this with a comma for the second argument, which is going to be six. And six is included with this as well, so it's, it is going to pick a number between one and six. And so what we're gonna do down here is drop a line and we're going to print the random number just like this. So whenever we join into the game and we fire this math.random function, it's going to automatically give us a different number every time we join into the game, but sometimes we can be lucky and Roblox will give us the same number consecutively. Okay, so we're gonna go into the game and it says that it picked out two. So if we stop it and then play again, it's going to pick five. And so if we stop it and then play it one more time, then it's going to pick a different number, which is six. So you get the idea at this point. Every single time we call the math.random function with the provided range, then it's going to return a random number within that range. So that is how we use math.random inside of our scripts. But now let's do something interesting with math.random. So what if we wanted to do something like change the base plate's color but to a random color every single time we join into the game, or if we were to throw this inside of a loop or something like that. We can actually do that by picking out random number values to put that as the color. And so if we were to basically select the base plate over here, and we selected this uh, color over here. So in the past, we've worked with changing the brick color, but there's actually another property that does the same thing, which is color. And this takes in three numbers to change the color rather than having a brick color object. So if we select this, then we can see this color wheel that basically allows us to change the color of something based on numbers itself. So if we were to pick a random number between zero and 255 for the red, green, and blue value, then we can have a random color every single time. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit cancel and we're gonna go to our random script. We're going to delete this code that we have here so far. And what we're first going to do is make reference to the base plate by saying local base plate equals game.workspace.baseplate, just like this. And then we're gonna make a while loop by saying while true do and then hit enter. So basically while true do, this is what's called an infinite while loop. And generally I don't recommend using this because this is going to run throughout the entire duration of the game since this conditional is always going to be true. But just for the sake of demonstration purposes, this is what I'm gonna be doing. So 
When we're using math.random to pick a random color, we need to have a red value, a green value, and a blue value. And we want to pick a random number from zero to 255 for each of these values. So we're gonna have three separate variables for each of them. So we're gonna say local red value equals math.random, open close parentheses. And then for the uh, minimum, we're going to put zero. And then for the maximum, we're gonna put 255. Now for the green value, we're going to say local green value equals math random and then in parentheses we're going to put zero and then 255 and then finally for the blue value like this we're going to set this equal to math.random and then zero 255 is the range so now that we have the red green and blue value let's change the base plate's color this might not make sense to you so i want you to follow what i type here when we're changing the color value of the base plate so what we're going to do is say base plate dot color equals color three dot from RGB, open and close parentheses, and then what we're going to put inside of here is the red value, comma, green value, comma, blue value, just like this. So this takes a color three object, and we're passing in the three color values that we created randomly with math.random. And in order to see these changes, what we're going to do is put in a wait statement and we need to make sure we do this. Otherwise, this is going to execute very, very quickly and it's gonna crash our script. So we need to put in a task.wait for let's say about two seconds. And now if we go into the game and hit play, then what we should see is the base plate's color changing every single time that two seconds have been passed. So if we go into the workspace and then click on the base plate, we can look down at the color property with a random red, green, and blue value that's being updated every two seconds. And so this is how we use math.random effectively inside of our game. Now, this is just a simple example, but obviously you can do a lot more with math.random. Like let's say you were playing a matchmaking system and it was picking a random map for the players to play for the next match, then that's what math.random can be used for. Uh, there's a lot of useful things you can do with it, but this is just one simple example I'd like to throw out there for you to use. Okay, now there are some things that we should know about math.random, like the ranges itself. So if I were to drop two lines down here, and if I were to have another random value by saying local random number equals math.random, open close parentheses, it's actually possible to mess up the range if we have a minimum value that's larger than the maximum value. So what I'm trying to get at here is if we have a maximum value of let's say 50, and if we were to have a minimum value of let's say negative 20, then this is not going to be a valid range because the minimum value has to be smaller than the maximum value. And another thing is you can have negative values as a minimum value as well. So if I were to basically comment out this code right here, so I'm just going to quickly go up here, comment out the code just like this by doing the double slashes and hard brackets and then having two end brackets by the end here. If we were to try and print the random number now by going into the game and hitting play, then it's going to say that invalid argument to number two to random interval is empty. The interval is empty because this is not a valid interval and we need to make sure that the minimum value is smaller than the maximum value when we're using math.random. So that's a little something I wanted to add in there when you're using math.random. So that's basically gonna be it for this episode. For today's learning objective, I want you to play around more with using math.random uh, for your scripts, whether that's changing the base plate's color again to something else for a specific range, uh, or you could change other properties like transparency from zero to one and all these other sorts of things. Now there's one quick thing I forgot to mention, and that is you can have math.random be an empty interval just like this, and it's going to pick a random number between zero and one by default. So it's going to pick a decimal number. So if we go into the game and hit play, then what we should see is a random decimal number inside of here that's being picked from zero to one. So that's another useful thing you can use if you're trying to create something random using math.random without a range. So that's a little something I wanted to add. Once again, once you finish with the challenge, then I want you to go down to the comment section, paste in your code so that other people can see your code that you feel comfortable sharing. And that's basically going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Take care.